I'm Sylvia, and I am a grateful recovering sexaholic. And my sobriety date's May 10th, 1983, and for that I will never be sufficiently grateful. And last night I was asked um, who they ought to get to introduce Tricia, and I said, I don't know. Who do you want to introduce her? And he said, uh, well, somebody that knows her. And I said, well, I know her a little bit. I am her sponsor. <laughs> so he asked me if I'd do this, and I'm really honored to do this. I will tell you. Um, I, asked, I asked Tricia what she wanted me to say, and, and believe it or not, she told me she didn't know. So that's pretty surprising, and that's great recovery. <laughs> Uh, she's not controlling or anything, but uh, <laughs> um, it's hard to know who sponsors who in this relationship because Trisha and I are the only two females in Oklahoma. So um, it's the way. <laughs> okay, I mean an SA in Oklahoma. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I have no ego problems either. <laughs> um, anyway, Trisha came to the program 15, 15 years ago. Anyway, she's been here a long time. And uh, she's gone through a, a lot during her recovery. She uh, had sobriety. She... I uh, had to practice uh, a little bit of uh, codependency, and um, and she's back, started back with the program, and she's got good sobriety now, and has uh, been a wonderful person to work with. Um, I've really enjoyed watching her grow, and um, watching her change, and she is really special. I could stand up here and tell you her story probably better than her, but I'm going to let her tell it for you. So, thanks. Welcome, Tricia. I want to say good evening, brothers and sisters, and, and especially my sisters, my sweet sisters. Um, I'm an only child by birth, but my chosen family, I have lots of sisters, and that's wonderful. I'm Tricia, and I'm very grateful to be a recovering sexaholic. Uh, my, my current sobriety date is uh, June 22, 1992. I had uh, four years and four months of sobriety, which I fortunately lost in order to gain wonderful gifts wonderful gifts, and the most important one was humility. I have my security blanket here, in case I forgot what to talk about. <laughs> um, I'm supposed to be sharing on steps 1 and 12, and the steps in between, working the steps in between, so I, I always take an opportunity to study about a step when I'm asked, asked to share about a step or actually it's about the principles. We're supposed to be talking about the principles here and the, the steps in between. I'd like to take a couple of minutes and... 20 minutes, you told me? Okay. To share with you um, a little bit about my story, I came in like any normal woman, uh, codependent woman, of course, to the essay program. I was 12 step the first time I went to a 12-step meeting. I went to, of course, the meeting that I belong to first and foremost, and that is the victim's meeting. I'm a professional victim. Don't I look like it? Um, that is called adult children of alcoholics. My dad was an alcoholic. I found out later that I dated a lot of alcoholics. I have two brothers. They're both alcoholics. One is in recovery. Thank you, God. The other one we pray for, and God is with him, I'm sure. Um, anyway, the first time I went to a meeting, I heard these two gentlemen saying that uh, they were addicted to lust. And it caught my attention. 
because I had just broken up with a boyfriend three years ago, but we still talked a lot. You know, I was try- still trying to fix him and change him and show him what a wonderful woman I was, and he changed his ways. You know, maybe some women in Essendon understand that. <laughs> so uh, I decided I need to go to this meeting for him. So I walked into my first SA meeting, and there were no women with there, and there was a man there with whom I had acted out. And I got the definite feeling he was still interested in acting out. Um, that is why I did not give my first step to the entire group, because I was too fearful of, of meeting with him. I just felt far too vulnerable. Um, that was a strange group, you know. I didn't, I didn't know if I could trust them, um, but they just looked too different, you know. They were normal human beings, but to me they looked real different, and I was really uncomfortable. So you know that what that tells me now is I was home, <laughs> but I wasn't ready to admit it. <laughs> so... Um, I did my own thing. I went to a girl. I went to a women's group for about a year and tried to deal with this. I was working uh, my ACA program. Couldn't get beyond the third step. And finally, God revealed to me by putting me in a sales job. I'd been in sales for 12 years by that time. Um, I was selling soft serve ice cream mach- uh, machines. And, of course, I had to face the realization that I had a food addiction. Thank you, God, for the first addiction because then I could work my fourth step. And when I did my fifth step, which was about five and a half hours with a minister, I realized that I had a few relationship issues. My core addiction is relationship addiction. Not so much romance and sexual, but but relationship addiction. So today I am really grateful to be able to tell you all that I surrender the right to seek or have a relationship unless God puts that in my life. And God has given me so many holy relationships. I am so full of love of others and I really feel that today and I sure it took a long time to get here a long time anyway um, so I finally came back after I had two major slips and my therapist said well we could put you into treatment or you can go to SA and being a cheapskate and not having much money (laughs) I just I was going to try this thing so I came in and February 14th of 19, uh, 1988, and four years and four months later, I had a slip just before uh, the Vancouver meeting. And um, because I'd already bought my ticket, I was determined to go. And I've learned to take a little vacation when I, when I come to conferences. That helps me feel less deprived because I could not afford to take a vacation and go to a conference. So I did some uh, sightseeing and then I came in and um, gave my first step. And when I went into that little hotel room, it was full of, it was just lined, big circle, big long circle. And I think a few, Tony, I don't know if you were there, but there were about 20 people from Oklahoma City. And it was a very healing experience for me. My first first step uh, my sponsor said, well, I heard a lot about how you were a victim, but I haven't heard how you were powerless and your life was unmanageable. So I had to do that one again. But, <laughs> but when I gave this one, I, I guess I, I gave it because it's kind of stuck. So today I have, God has given me eight years. Um, at the time I lost my sobriety, I had um, five sponsorees. I was... Um, uh, a trusted servant in the inner group. Um, I was thinking about doing some work on the regional level. And um, I had to let go of all that. I felt so much shame. I did not have the courage to call my sponsorees and tell them that I'd lost my sobriety. And several of them were very, very angry with me. And one woman told me she even lost her sobriety because I lost my sobriety. <laughs> Boy, did I feel powerful. <sighs> Awful. Um, the, the interesting part about my addiction my addiction didn't start until I was an adult, an adult I was married my husband wasn't giving me what I wanted what I deserved and what I was demanding so I went out and got it someplace else and there I was saying why am I here why am I having this adulterous thing because my husband wasn't giving what I wanted to demand now a normal codependent never asks. She always assumes that the husband is supposed to read her mind. So he wasn't giving me what I wanted. 
Um, and he told me the only time he could touch me was sexually. He could not touch me in an affectionate way. And I thought all I wanted was affection. Well, I wanted a lot of other things. I wanted him to fill my God hole. Um, he, was, he was my God when I was married to him and for a long time afterwards. I only know that because friends told me after the divorce that uh, I never had an opinion of my own. Well, I married a a fellow. I helped him get a master's and a Ph.D. Well, of course you're a god when you have a Ph.D., aren't you? I mean, that's what I thought. (laughs) So um, I've had to learn to have my own opinions, and it's taken a few years to do that. I thought I was the uh, marrying kind. I knew um, if I could live alone for a while, at least a year, then I could marry. I have been now divorced uh, um, some years. (laughs) And I'm very happy living alone. Because, you see, I'm, I'm alone. I am not lonely. I was extremely lonely in my marriage. Very lonely in my marriage. Um, and when my husband didn't treat me the way my family of origin treated me, I did a pretty good job of teaching him how to do that. People treat me the way I teach them to treat me. You know, So as I didn't value myself, I would not allow him to value me. One example was he gave me some perfume and we were students most of my married life and I scolded him for giving me some perfume. Well, it turns out he got it free. Well, I had spoiled it. After that, he never gave me another gift. He stopped telling me, he told me, he stopped telling me I was attractive because I told him it was a lie. Now, I don't remember doing this. Um, Anyway, my acting out I wanted to share with you what my acting out was about. It started with adultery, promiscuity. Let me see. I had to write it down because sometimes I forget. Uh, romantic relationship fantasies, and uh, they started at probably age five. When I grow up, I remember sitting at my little table looking out the door, and my mother and father were screaming and having one of their usual regular fights. I was going to be able to talk to my spouse. I was going to have a family where we didn't do this stuff. So starting at a young age, I had fantasies about a relationship. And my husband was going to be, actually came out to be God, because I expected so much. And who could possibly live up to that? Um, I did a lot of uh, seduction, uh, the hunt, the chase, flirtation, all that kind of stuff. That's where my high came from, not from the acting out. Uh, Group sex, one night stands some pornography, had a boyfriend into transvestitism, helped him in that. That was really uh, scary to me because it was so strong. Um, You know, when uh, when I hear therapists who talk about um, no no such thing as sexual addiction, God, I got a real big high on of that. Um, And the inability to say no. Since I have 10 minutes left, <laughs> I want to share with you um, what I've learned about the principles as I've worked each step. The first step, the principle is honesty. Now, we've, you've probably heard a lot of talks about honesty. I was a liar. The only person I really cared about not lying to was myself. And I was a wonderful con to myself. Everyone in the world knew what the devil was going on except myself. Um, On and on and on. And the the primary example that I can give you is that I came into the program, needing the program, and I lied to myself. I said I came for someone else. I lost my sobriety and I didn't know I'd lost it because I lied to myself. I thought that um, a certain form of sex was the loss of sobriety. If I got something out of it, that was my loss of sobriety. I gave sex away. And that was it. I did a sexual act. And I had to have my sponsor tell me that I'd lost my sobriety. Of course, I was very angry with her for a long time. Yeah. she told she, We were talking on the telephone and she told me, and I was still at work, and uh, I cried for two hours later and I I can still feel that pain. I don't want to have to go back there. But it never crossed my mind to not come back. I knew that that 
I could go out there again and I would go a lot farther than I'd ever gone before. The second principle is hope from the second step. I had no hope. I thought I was a piece of garbage when I came in. Uh, even went to a <laughs> went to a Halloween party dressed as a bag of garbage. Not not you know not on purpose, but just did that one time. What I've learned in the program is I get hope by taking action. Every time I see somebody who takes some action and gets a different result, gets something that that's different, that's hopeful. Uh, that's enlightening, that gives me hope. Um, I get honesty by coming to the meetings and listening to other people get honest because then they remind me of what I'm not being honest with. So I can't stop coming to the meetings because I know I lie to myself. I, I can justify, I can rationalize, I can do all that kind of stuff just too easily. The third principle of faith, well, I didn't believe in God. I had no relationship with God. And I remember this when I was 14 years old. I, I went to the priest and I studied for a year with him. I went to a, I was raised Catholic, so I went to a Catholic college so I could understand my faith and have some faith. And you know, all this head stuff didn't get me anywhere. It just got me farther away from the God of my understanding. Uh, I came to realize later that I had my father's face on God. And I transferred that. The brain generalizes that I transferred that to all males. Um, now, the God of my understanding lives within. It is the spirit. Um, it is that feeling between us. It is Catherine giving me that massage she gave that took the pain away from my shoulder. It's my sponsor telling me in her southern drawl. She says she's western, but she's southern. I love you. She's just wonderful. Four and five are courage and integrity. I always wanted to have great integrity. My name means patrician. It means noble woman. I want to live up to that. But I had no way. I, I went to meditation class for almost ten years, and I, I didn't have these wonderful mystical experiences, and I didn't understand why, and my teacher said, you just need to clean up. But he didn't tell me how. Church tells me, you need to be this, you need to be that, you need to be other. But it didn't tell me how. If you want to know how, come to the 12-step program. So I, be I began to have some integrity when I started to work my steps. Willingness to me is a mystery. I only know I'm willing after the fact. I finally did something and I become willing. And I found that for me, willingness does not have to be a major deal. It can be as the tiniest acorn. Okay, I'm willing to do one little thing. Okay, I'm willing to... And I have a, I have a very strong three-year-old little girl inside. And she comes out every time my sponsor makes a suggestion, you know. So my sponsor's very quiet. See, she, she's, she's very, she slowed me down a lot. And that's one of the signs of recovery in myself. I, I am so much slower now. When I go back home, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a damn Yankee. You know, damn Yankees brought their carpet bags and stayed. They were calling me a damn Yankee for years, and I didn't know what it meant. It was really, I thought it was a compliment. <laughs> so anyway, now when I go back home, and my brother starts talking like, you know, I, I said, please, you have to slow down. I can't hear that fast. And I, I can't. And I'm learning to do one thing at a time, not three or four. That's a miracle. Um, the seventh one is humility. Uh, and I, the, my biggest opportunity for that was my loss of sobriety. Eight and nine are self-discipline and love for others. And in that, I must share with you the most important event in my the most important promise of, of this program for me. Um, my dad is deceased. And I did a lot of work on him. I went to therapy in anger, and it was about him. And I've not been able to heal in my own mind the mother inside of me and my real mother. My mother is 80 years old. Um, she's a very strong woman. God, I never thought I'd say that, because all my life I thought she was so dependent and so weak. But today... 
Today, I admire my mother because she could tell me that since the death of her second husband and her open heart surgery, she's come to realize that she has been dependent on men. See, I inherited, I learned how to do that from her. And that she sees things differently. You see, last Friday, I, um, I flew to Buffalo, my hometown, and I visited my girlfriend from high school. We've been friends for uh, <laughs> so many years. And uh, after I visited her, I went to my mom's house. And when I got up at the top of the stairs, she said, You're pretty. My mother has never said that to me. Never. I have so sought to feel close to her. You know, I have grieved so long. Some kind of connection. To not be the mother, but to be the child. And God gave me that. And I didn't have to call my sponsor. And I didn't have to run away. I didn't have to go eat or get into lust. I could be with my mom and help her pack. And we had a couple of times, and she crossed a couple of my boundaries, but she respected my boundaries. And so God can work in others, even if they don't work this program. There are as many ways to God as there are people in this world. So I know nothing. I know absolutely nothing. And I hope I can hang on to that so that I never stop being teachable because that's what it means to be humble is to be teachable to be open to be willing to learn so the, the tenth the tenth principle is perseverance it's always been easy for me to start a program it's been very difficult to stick with it I keep getting more and more I came in, I was going to get this and leave. How could I possibly leave with a gift like this? The gifts that God has given me through you just are absolutely overwhelming. The, um, the eleventh principle is self-aware, spiritual awareness, and the twelfth one is service. I want to share with you, I have just a minute or two left, I, um, I've had three major surgeries since I've been in Oklahoma. I've been in Oklahoma over 30 years. And God has always provided a number, not one, but a number of mothers. They were not my biological mother. They had to come and clean my house, cook my food, and wash my hair. I couldn't stand up long enough to wash my hair. Um, to take me to the doctor when I was too sick to go, you know. Um, last September I moved into my third home which is pretty big I have um, just exactly what I wanted I wanted a large living dining um, kitchen area so when I cook when I have my friends over I can sit there I can stand there and cook and they can sit there at the bar and talk to me as a matter of fact, uh, a few weeks ago, Nancy and I had a wonderful conversation. She was in Cleveland, and I was making a pasta meal for, for work the next day, and I put her on the speakerphone. So I even have my sisters around when they're not physically there. That was wonderful. Um, so God gave me this house. And you see, I to get this house, I moved out of a house that had been devalued after I moved into it. I lost a few thousand dollars on the deal, but God still gave me just the house I needed in a wonderful neighborhood. I have wonderful neighbors. They're taking care of my lawn, taking my mail, you know. <laughs> it's just overwhelming watching my cat. These are three different neighbors. This is not the same person. See, I have family everywhere I go. Um, I have a person in program that's helping me with some repairs on the house. 
when I went to Vancouver, I'm just telling you all the little gifts that got, and these are just material things, just material things. I went to Vancouver, got a free trip to go to Alaska the next year. That was through the airlines. You see, I went into sales, spent 12 years in sales because I was going to make enough damn money that I was never going to be dependent on another man again. Thank you, God, for giving me all these gifts, not by my earning it, but directly from you. It's so obvious they're direct from you. Um, today, uh, not only and my mother gave me a new car, she decided not to drive anymore. Um, Jack, I was telling Sylvia all the stuff I can't remember. Just to be here, you know, to be of service, uh, to have relationships. I have intimacy with men in my life. Uh, the safest men in my life are the ones in program. They're the ones. I've had some come over and thank you. <laughs> He says I can say a few words to wrap up. <laughs> it's, it's so nice to be a token woman. We were, <laughs> we were talking about that. At women in essay meetings are token women sometimes or the, the specimen. Um, <laughs> see, I went to meetings and I thought you were all objects. <laughs> and, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, my addiction was about power and control, you know, and, uh, and to be intimidating because that's how I felt inside. And the way I hid, as, as the, one of the Essanons shared, the way I hid my fear was to, to, print, to be as tough or tougher than, to be more seductive than another person. Never be vulnerable, you know. And now um, I see it takes much greater power to be vulnerable. I recently read a a quotation that said, to have control of others is to have strength. To have control of yourself is to have power. And I don't even have to have control of myself. Today, God's power does for me what I don't, what I cannot do. And it was the power of God in me that helped me not yell and scream and overreact with my mother. It was the power of God in me that helped me relax so that I could speak with you and be with you and not have to read the stuff I wrote. Uh, It's the power of God within me that makes me feel safe and comfortable in my home. Um, I was robbed when I was living in an apartment before I moved into my last house. Uh, And you know, that was okay. It cost me some money. But I, I know that the Spirit of God is within me. You can do anything to my physical body, but that is not me. I am spirit, and I just happen to be in a body. Uh, Today I'm healthier than I ever was uh, in the past. Um, What else? I have God in my life. I never had that before the program. That's the most important gift. And I I think I know a little about the promises. I have experienced peace and joy, uh, serenity. And if I have that, the funny part about it is I don't need anything else. I don't need anyone else. But it comes. It's a natural byproduct that who I am brings to me all the things that are, that are reflecting of where I am now. So when I see these wonderful people in my life, I know that I have really must have changed. I must have grown. And and I really want to pre- I want to appreciate the folks who asked me to share with you today. Um, there was there were a lot of messages from God for me for that to affirm that maybe I do have something to share with you. Um, and I want to thank each and every one of you for listening and give me the love that I feel here. It's really neat being up here feeling all this love. It is really wonderful. Thank you.